When the remaining Avengers asked Bruce Banner to help Scott Lang trip through time, we finally got the answer to the question, does Paul Rudd age? It turns out that the EPR paradox, or the einstein podolsky rosen paradox, that's right, it's a real thing, that Tony Stark mentioned means that you can push time through someone instead of pushing them through time. But that kind of time travel provides an interesting what if. What if you use that technology on purpose? Since What If is coming to the MCU, let's take a look at the implications of Time's trip through Scott Lang. It was fun to watch Scott Lang experience a condensed version of the last 15 minutes of 2001 A Space Odyssey by becoming a child, an old man, and a baby, and then whatever eternal unaging being Paul Rudd currently is and seems to have been forever. Seriously, he looks a year older than he did in Clueless in 1995. How does Rudd stay so young? He might have an inverted time machine by the Hulk. Imagine if the team had refined the machine that sent Lang through the Sphinx's riddle in rapid random order. Redditor AK2SUP noticed the implications of the ability to change the age, but not the intellect of characters. It certainly could become a powerful tool, which could have massive implications for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So many, in fact, that we'll probably never see them all. The ability to turn any character any age is a very comic book style trope, but comic books are drawn. You can draw a character any way you want, with wild hair or pointy toes. When comic books make the jump to the big screen with big screen actors who don't all have Paul Rudd's age-defying superpowers, that gets a little trickier. There is, of course, a way for the Marvel Cinematic Universe to answer these questions in a traditional Marvel way, and that is through the upcoming animated series based on the long-running What If title. What If has been Marvel's way of presenting alternate storylines for characters over the years. Presented by Uatu the Watcher, different versions and timelines of characters are explored. Like, what if Aunt May had been bitten by a radioactive spider? She would become spider may -um. Yeah. With Disney Plus getting an animated What If, we could take a look at the wider implications of Banner's accidental immortality machine without the wider implications of actors, contracts, and digital de-aging. AK2SUB managed to come up with some of the more immediate uses for the machine that could solve some of Earth's mightiest heroes' problems at the end of Endgame. There were some big changes for our heroes during the finale of the Infinity Saga. There were some heavy changes, like Captain America stepping out of his time travel schedule and coming back age-appropriate, meaning that we'd have to live in a world without a Captain America. Or at least a Steve Rogers Captain America. And then there were just some regular consequences, like the Hulk ending up with a wounded arm after using the Nano Gauntlet to bring back the Snapped. Should the Hulk not be able to heal his arm through regular means, he could push himself back to the time before the Snap. Getting back in shape after one has let themselves go can be a long and taxing affair. All those cardio days and salad lunches are a hassle. Should dude Thor want to get back to his ripped abs form without all that work and discipline, he could just take a quick trip through the machine and he's back to his Jane Foster distracting shape. Captain America is the biggest do-over that the Hulk's immortality machine offers. Rogers skipped out on his trip through time to return the Infinity Stones and Thor's hammer, so he could finally have that dance with Peggy. And then the life that Tony Stark and Natasha Romanoff kept telling him to have, becoming the mysterious veteran that Peggy was married to all along. One of the things that might have helped push Rogers off the timeline was having to return the Soul Stone to his oldest enemy, the Red Skull. In the comics, Red Skull has followed Cap through his journey from World War II into the present to be a persistent foe for the Star-Spangled Hero. In the MCU, he has the possibility to do that once Thanos frees him from his punishment as the Keeper of the Soul Stone. At some point, Rogers might realize that his original foe is now free to follow through on his quest for power. We know that another classic Captain America villain, Helmut Zemo, will return to menace the person currently carrying the Shield for America and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Can someone as driven by duty and purpose as Steve Rogers keep himself from stepping into the immortality machine to fight for the underdog one more time? Or has the life he missed out on with Peggy Carter the first time finally given him the complete life he lacked? By the way, there are other more tragic Avengers who could benefit from a rewind. Tony Stark left a big hole in the world of the MCU with his sacrifice. After he emerged from that cave in Afghanistan in the Mark I armor, he launched the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Since that time, it's been hard to imagine an MCU without Tony Stark in it. Stark has appeared in almost as many of the other characters' movies as he has in his own. He was uniquely qualified to start the Avengers initiative and get Earth's Mightiest Heroes rolling. 
He was also the only way that Thanos could be defeated, at least according to what Doctor Strange was able to see. Stark's death not only leaves Pepper and Morgan alone, but also leaves big shoes in the wider MCU to fill. And if Sony and Disney can't work things out, they're not going to be filled by Peter Parker. But if they push time back through Tony Stark, or Tony Stark's bones, the MCU could have its Iron Man back. One of the more tragic moments of Avengers Infinity War was at the end, but before the snap. As sad as the snap was, we knew that those dusted heroes were going to come back. Spider-Man had a movie release date a month after Endgame, after all. But Earth's mightiest heroes made a last stand in Wakanda, trying to take the Mind Stone out of Vision so that Scarlet Witch could destroy it. Unfortunately, they weren't able to do it in time, and Wanda had to destroy the Mind Stone while it was still in Vision's head. And then Thanos used his own version of the Immortality Machine, the Time Stone, to bring Vision back to life just so he could take the Mind Stone and complete his gauntlet. We already know that the Hulk's Immortality Machine can span years, since it sends Scott Lang all the way back to being a little baby. Could the Immortality Machine be the thing that brings Vision back to life for WandaVision? Well, probably not. Actor contracts and regular aging of actors who aren't Paul Rudd are only part of the problem of using the Hulk's machine as a get-out-of-consequences-free card. While there is a rule in comics that says that no one stays dead except for Uncle Ben, there are some consequences that you can't undo without undoing the stakes of the story that was being told. It's one thing to revive a character to continue their story, and another to undermine the drama of the story that's already been told. Sure, there have been some deaths in the MCU that haven't taken. Agent Coulson was stabbed by Loki only to find himself in Tahiti, a magical place. But by Tahiti, they mean the terrestrialized alien host integrative tissue. And by magical, they mean total nightmare fuel. Even Loki, by the time he killed, but not really killed Coulson, he had already denied death once and had at least one more in him, even without the convenience of time travel. Regular audiences unfamiliar with the Uncle Ben rule have scoffed a bit at the impermanence of death in the MCU, as removing any sense of stakes for the stories. But superhero stories do have stakes by taking certain sacrifices seriously. It's why the rule is no one stays dead except for Uncle Ben. If Uncle Ben were to come back, it would undermine the core of Peter Parker's character. Vision will come back, but Captain America and Iron Man have completed an arc with a satisfying finish in the MCU. While the shared universe has created an ongoing open-ended story that can live beyond the Infinity Saga, some of the story arcs are in fact done. To bring back Steve Rogers or Natasha Romanoff or Tony Stark would undo too much of the Infinity Saga and the journey the characters went through. This is where the what-if stories fit in. They can ask these questions without actually altering the timeline and undermining the dramatic consequences. Of course, it wouldn't be a comic book story without unintended consequences. Aside from some bumbling that took place trying to get a hold of that troublesome Tesseract, where the time heist really went wrong is when Thanos became hip to the plan and used the time machine to travel to the future and try and destroy the Avengers and creation once and for all. In fact, technology used for good getting into the wrong hands has been a recurring theme in the MCU. Obadiah Stane used Stark's arc reactor technology to create his own power suit. Yellow Jacket tried to use the Pym particles as a weapon sold to the highest bidder. Killmonger wanted to use the Wakandan vibranium technology to arm a revolt. The unintended consequences is a key element in the MCU. A freed Red Skull could use the device to resurrect some of the Infinity Saga's lost villains like Stane and Yellow Jacket. Or the act of passing Vision through the Immortality Machine might reactivate Ultron, who is part of Vision causing him to use the machine to do something similar. While the Immortality Machine could reassemble the Avengers, it could also assemble an MCU version of the Cabal. The only member of the Cabal from the comics that exists in the MCU is Loki, for now, but the MCU has taken its own liberties now and then when appropriate. In the comics, the unintended consequences of time travel grand champion is the villainous Kang the Conqueror. It's said that when Alexander looked at the scope of his domain, he wept because there were no more worlds to conquer. Or maybe it was because he knew he would eventually be played by Colin Farrell. Either way, Kang solved this problem by skipping through time and conquering worlds all over again. Though Kang himself isn't unfamiliar with the concept of unintended consequences. Once he had established his time conquering, he decided to do what anyone with a time machine would do. Go back in time and try and impress his teenage self with all his success. Well, okay, maybe not anyone. Just egomaniacal conquerors. 
Turns out, though, that his teenage self was horrified at what he would become. Instead of joining his future self and conquering time, he decided to become a hero and help from the Young Avengers to stop himself, even taking on the mantle of Iron Lad, a nod to Kang's foe, Iron Man. We all know that we disappoint our younger selves in one way or another, but enough to have them form a superhero team to defeat you has to sting a little. So what would that story look like? The first one to potentially step up to the possibility of the immortality machine would be the ever-loving Hulk himself, Bruce Banner. If he finds himself unable to heal his wounded arm, he might look at the chance to push time through him to the point where he had two functioning arms. After all, Bruce Banner has a history of self-experimentation. Wanda then implores the restored Hulk to use that technology to restore vision, mind stone and all. With an Infinity Stone brought back into existence, the now freed Red Skull might take an interest in taking it from Vision's head again. He might even realize that he can create a nearly endless supply of mind stones by killing Vision, rewinding and killing Vision again. A returned Red Skull becomes the reason for Rogers to come out of retirement, sending himself through the Immortality Machine. That is when the idea is floated to get the old band back together. This means Tony Stark comes back and the team heads out to Vormir to try and get Natasha back. This is when they attract the attention of Kang the Conqueror. The sacrifices that are made to acquire the Soul Stone are meant to have no backseas. Undoing that permanence would send shockwaves through time and space that could attract Kang the Conqueror. Kang does what Kang does best. He conquers. That would be when Master of Kind of Bummer News, Doctor Strange, points out that the only way to put the Kang genie back in the bottle is to redo all the things they undid with the Immortality Machine and send Kang back where he came from. Even though this would redo all the consequences of the Infinity Saga that could be undone with the Immortality Machine, it's not something that Feige would do with the MCU proper. Co-director Joe Russo has said in interviews that Tony is really gone, as Rocket would say, and that is the way it would stay. But it would make for an interesting what if, and asking what if is part of the fun of a superhero universe. That is one way things could go with the Hulk's immortality machine. What other implications do you think there might be? Would Ultron be the more likely villain? Red Skull? Someone else? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We'll shoot straight with you, it's not gonna make you immortal, but it will have the intended consequence of having awesome videos in your inbox.